Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again. And I'd like to share some information with you. Many of you have heard about Dr. King and uh, Malcolm X. They have been two of the prominent black figures, or should I say American figures, during my lifetime. And maybe for a period much greater than that. But there were some things that were important to them back in the 60s when they were alive. And they used to have a belief in God, but they tested their belief and it took them to a knowledge of God and allowed them to represent God in a hellhole America. And because they were genuine, it allowed those who believed to trust and follow. And together they were able to accomplish some minor things like being able to ride on a bus for black people, not at the back, being able to eat in restaurants and public places that usually were kept for white only while blacks were at the back or in the yard. They made for water fountains and bathrooms to be made to be used by anybody regardless of their shade. These things happened. Now what happened was this evil and ugliness and lack of compassion and heartlessness allowed America to grow up that way. And these changes were required in order to bring some semblance of, just, of justice. And so the people under the guidance of Dr. King and Malcolm X, what did they represent? They represented truth. They represented the truth so that people could see it. But they didn't just, you know, just say it. They walked according to it. You can't eat in the public restaurants. So they walked and sit in the public restaurants and asked to be served. And if they weren't served, they weren't leaving unless they were arrested. They got on the buses and they were going to stay on there until they were accepted or arrested. They were saying, we're going to put righteousness over our fear of intimidation that comes from the system. And they were able to accomplish many things. But justice, my friends, was still somewhere, some distance, hiding, waiting for a time such as this. And we have been given a golden opportunity to see how urgent it is. We have been having, over the past several years, an opportunity to experience Donald Trump, who is a representation of all of the ugliness and evilness of all of America's history. And by him being such a representation, just like Dr. King and Malcolm X were, they drew good people out. Donald Trump draws ugly, evil people out. When I say good, I'm talking about people who are willing to put their lives on the line by standing up for what's right. Dr. King, Malcolm X, and blacks. When I'm talking about white people standing up for what's right, they don't put their lives, they come with guns. They come to kill. They come to do anything to force you. So they're not talking, they become their own gods. And so this is what we're dealing with today. Right now, it is just as important that people, not just black people, but all people have housing. But it's not going to just happen. Why? Because the money operation and the systemic stuff that goes on. So if you want some housing, you can stop talking about legislation. You can stop talking about, uh, we're going to make sure that this political party do this, or they promise this, or this other party promise this, or whenever you try to get a chance to exercise uh, the uh, fruition of your promise, then the other side attacks you and you can't accomplish anything. So year after year after year, promises and promises are made and nothing is accomplished. Nothing is accomplished. That's a trick. <clears throat> it. And at the same time, it's a revelation that there are those amongst us who believe in God, but there are none of us who know God to the extent we stand up and walk in the tracks, as you might say, of Jesus Christ. So this is why we have not accomplished anything. Now, I used to say that I would walk, you know, commit crimes just to get attention, go to jail. I'm not afraid of the system. You can't do anything to me that that's not going to happen to me anyway. I'm going to die anyway. So let me stand for something. And by standing for something alone, I'm just ignoring. So sometimes I'm holding back, hoping that maybe somebody else can come along with me and make it a little bit easier. 
But that's not happening. We have been reduced to a fear. We have been produced to a state of complete ignorance when it comes down to God. And the Bible is not teaching us anything about God that we should do today. It tells us a little bit about history, about happened yesterday, what happened yesterday. And the story is corrupt because it, it contradicts itself. And you don't know where to stand. But a person like you or myself who allow the Spirit of God to live in us, then we're supposed to know. When I say this big thing about God is that all of this earth was created for all of the people that's on it. When I say all of the resources that are used to do the things that people need on this earth was designed by the creator of this earth so that we the people who would need those things could have access to it and would make it available to it because those of us who would benefit from it play a part in the process of creating it and enough of it and all of the people participating in one form or fashion makes all of us entitled to it. No one above another. Your job is your job. You can create artificial intelligence. You can create what you call spaceships. Or you can clean up the bathroom. But no one is above the other. Why? Because God has provided that each of us have a talent. And the talent that we have is what God gave us. It didn't make us bigger or better than anything else or anyone else. It's just something that we have been given to do. And we were designed to do that. Not to come on earth and rip people off. But if we don't know God and we fall into a system that's already doing that, then that is what we will continue to do. And that's what we are continuing, continuing to do in America. And it's much bigger than that. As you can see, Russia attacking Ukraine, same kind of power, United States, United, Russia attacking Ukraine to force them, like Trump want to force, like Trump and his people want to force others to yield to whatever he says. And they support it. Force. Willing to put them in jail. Talking about killing them. Talking about what, what, going to some old bay, uh, military base, and be slaughtered or whatever. Ain't no God in that. This these church stuff. On, let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. I know you're going to get mad. But according to the way I see it, these churches in America have no idea of what God is. You have let evil. And your love for evil allow you to pretend by doing this little handout, doing that little handout, and pretend like you're doing something good. When you know darn well, if you were in receipt of those little handouts, you would know it would disgust you if you need a place to stay. It would disgust you if you needed bills paid. It would disgust you if there's no transportation for you in wintertime and the traffic just can't go any place. You stuck no food. All of these things, my friends, are very, very important. But you can only deal with them when you care. And if, it's, if you are a victim and you have been put under the fear of the state, you've been put under the fear of white people, you, then you allow that stuff to happen. And you think that you're representing God. God is no coward. You are a coward. And God is not in you. And those over there who are willing to do it to you, they are cowards as well. They don't trust God. They think they're bigger than God. And they're going to rob God of all the things that God planned to, to be the outcome of the creation. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So what am I saying this for? I'm saying the same activities, the same commitment that Dr. King and Malcolm X and, and Megar Evers and the three young boys down in Philadelphia, Mississippi, and the white woman from Detroit who gave their lives up, standing up, walking according to the dictates of the Spirit of God. We're going to do that, do that too. We're going to have to do that because whoever runs the system have no compassion, none whatsoever for the rest of the people. So I just thought this morning after I had said I wasn't, wasn't going to make any more posts, this thing hit me and I figured that maybe, you know, we got a young generation today. A lot of us old people are dying and others have died. And so the new generation have come along. They don't know too much about Dr. King. They hear about the holiday. They hear about a little, um, what is it, black history. They don't know anything about it because the realness of it is it's fake to them. So we need to get engaged in doing for one another as we would have others to do for us. And to this degree, I would recommend that there is a church that's being started in St. Paul, Minnesota called the Universal Church. 
And its purpose is to basically give you an instruction and some insight on how that Bible have tricked you and caught you and put you in a trap. So your love for God does not mean anything. Your love for God does not mean anything. It is shown when you give those preachers, those prosperity preachers your money and allow them to live just like the richness that you're trying to tear down. I want you to know, ain't no rich people in heaven. Uh, T.D. Jake, uh, Osteen, there's no rich people in heaven. See, to say, to say you're rich, meaning that there, there's those that are poor. No, no, everything is fine in heaven. And richness, you can stay down here. And superiority, is no superiority in heaven except God. And if you think you're superior, you can stay right over down here. Well, whatever that means. So I'm not going to go any deeper into that, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to give you some idea, something that you can think about. And, and I don't have to be thinking about it all the time by myself. Me, myself? I'm willing to give my life up. I'm giving it up every day. I've given it up for 40 some odd years. That don't mean I'm 40 years old. I'm about 40 on top of that. But for the last 40, I've given it up. That's why I can speak for the poor. Because I got nothing. Yeah, there are people around me with something. But I got nothing. And I know what it feels like not to have anything. When you want to have something. But sometimes it's hard to be alone. Dr. King Malcolm X alone could not accomplish anything, but they had the spirit of truth with them, and there was an urgency that allowed that spirit to spread across the nation. Right now, it seems as if the only thing we're thinking about is getting even. Forget the even, ladies and gentlemen, and let's get ahead. Until next time, Eddie Marcus saying goodbye for now.